Ever since getting into mobile gaming, I've been taking a power bank with me to work every single day. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, and I don't use it all the time, but if I bring something like my ROG Ally, I definitely use it. If I play this in the morning, I'll just pop it onto a battery bank, and it'll be fully charged by the next time I'm ready to use it. The only issue with battery banks is they're pretty small. This is not necessarily a bad thing, especially when you need a little bit more room in your bag and you don't want to carry something big and heavy with you. But what if you were going camping? You're going to need something pretty big. What about this one? No, that won't do. That's too small. So we're going to need something a little bigger. What about this one? I thought this was a pretty good battery bank. But this is also not as big as I hoped. I do really like this battery bank, but it's only rated at 20,000 milliamp hours or 74 watt hours, which is still pretty decent. But what if you need something just a little bigger? Here's something a little bigger. This INIU power bank is rated at 25,000 milliamp hours or 92.5 watt hours. This also supports 100 watt quick charging. What if we want something even bigger? Maybe this will do. Okay, this is a little big, but I think this is going to definitely exceed what we're looking for when it comes to camping or anything else. If you got the room to take this with you, this is one hell of a power bank. Full disclosure as well, this was sent to me by the company, but they're not seeing this review before it goes up and of course all opinions are my own. I'm going to give you my honest thoughts to what I think about it. Let's take a look at the Aohi Future Starship Battery Bank. If you've been watching my channel for a little while, you'll remember that I did a review on these guys' cables a little while back. I was pretty impressed with the build quality of these cables, and overall I really did like them. One thing I was interested about though was their power bank. This is a pretty expensive power bank at 200 US dollars if you use their code at the time of writing this review, but the power bank has a lot going for it. This can double as a power bank or a charging station, which is pretty cool. When I'm not using this as a power bank, this will probably sit on my desk as a nice little charging station. It supports power delivery 3.1 at 140 watts with bi-directional fast charging. You also get an 18 month warranty, which is pretty generous for a power bank. This does look pretty big, but I think it's going to suit a lot of people. I do like this little smart display as well, as it's going to show us how fast these are charging. I can use this for a lot of my videos, checking the charge rates of devices. If we're using one port at a time, looks like the USB-A can go up to 18 watt quick charge and the USB-C's can both go up to 140 watts max. If we're using both the USB-C ports at once, they'll go down to 65 watt quick charging, but this is pretty decent still because most handhelds are only going to support 65 watt charging anyways. I don't even think I own a device that supports faster than 65 watt quick charging. Let's jump in and take a closer look at the Aohi Starship Battery Bank. Looks like the one they sent me is a limited edition, but I have no idea if this means that this comes with anything else that a regular one doesn't. Let's get the plastic off. This is some pretty durable plastic. One thing I got a hand to Aohi is they definitely know how to make nice packaging. The packaging on the cables that I reviewed was some of the nicest packaging I've ever seen on an accessory. Let's take a peek inside the box. Oh, that is cool. This kind of threw me off for a second, but it says cable and manual at the bottom. So. I pulled this out and I didn't see anything. If we lift this out though, underneath that, there's still not anything. So I thought, what the heck, did I not get any cables? Flipping this over, this is where the cable was. When I pulled this out, I just noticed how incredibly solid this thing feels. Out of every battery bank that I have, this thing feels like at least double the weight from all of them. There's a nice big screen on the one side. Looks like there's about 29% charge on it right now and the build quality is excellent. There's a little button on the side that brings up the screen. Tapping that will show the current battery level and that it's in battery bank mode. It also shows all the different ports and what they're charging at. On the top, we find the charging ports. The USB-A will go up to 18 watts. The USB-C's will charge at 140 watts, but if you're using two of them, they'll go down to 65 watt each. You can also use the USB-A at 18 watts and one of these at 120 watts as well. If you use all three of these at once, this is going to charge at 18 watts and each of these is going to charge at 60 watts. This should be more than enough to charge the ROG Ally and the Steam Deck at the same time. The only other thing that we find on the bottom is the USB-C in. 
If you have the right charger, this will charge at 140 watts. The only one that I have that can come close to this is the 100 watt quick charger from AYN. Let's compare the weight and size to a few of the other battery banks that I own. The basiest power bank is the smallest one on the list. This one isn't the lightest though, and the AND tank takes that spot. I'll leave the weights of all these battery banks on the screen above so you can see how heavy these are. This really shows just how solid this thing is. This is one heavy battery bank, but it feels like a quality product and I don't mind the weight. This isn't something that I'd want to take with me to work every day just because of how heavy it is. I'll probably end up using this as a charging station on my desk. If I go on vacation though, this is definitely going to come with me. This is literally almost double the capacity of most of my other battery banks. This is also built a lot better than a lot of these other battery banks. The AND tank has a very soft plastic on it and it leaves a lot of fingerprints. The Basius power bank is made out of a much more durable frame, but of course metal does show fingerprints. However, since this metal is soft to the touch, it does actually resist fingerprints pretty decently. And these disappear pretty quick. Out of all the battery banks that I've tried, this one is definitely the most premium up to this point. Unfortunately, mine was damaged in shipping, but this hasn't bothered me and the power bank still works really well. The INIU 100 watt battery bank is the one that I've been taking with me to work. This comes to work with me every single day. And this has been a pretty good battery bank, but because it has a soft plastic coating, this thing gets pretty dirty and attracts a lot of fingerprints. A nice thing about this one is it has a pretty high capacity battery in it. This is 92.5 watt hours. I can definitely get quite a few charges out of this one. The coating on the Alhi power bank is also a very smooth plastic. And this does also attract fingerprints a little bit, but they disappear pretty quick too. And it's pretty nice. Even after holding this for a bit, I'm not really seeing many fingerprints. This seems to resist fingerprints pretty decently. And I'm quite happy with the build quality. Seems like there's a little mark on the bottom of mine. This doesn't really change how the battery bank operates though. This line continues around the other side and I can't wipe it off. Looking at the battery capacity, this is rated at 144 watt hours. This is a good 50% larger than my biggest battery and it definitely shows. We have all the other specifications on the side. Obviously the best part of getting anything new is peeling off the plastic. With that peeled off, it looks even nicer. I love the glossy screen on the top. This is obviously going to attract fingerprints, but I don't really see this as an issue. Just for curiosity's sake, I plugged in my ROG Ally charger and I'm getting 62.2 watt quick charging. So this is definitely working. Let's try a 100 watt quick charger and make sure that works too. The screen is a little dim, but I can still see it. It looks like this 100 watt quick charger is charging at about 92 to 93 watts. That's pretty impressive. I'm gonna have to leave this for a little bit to charge it up. So far I'm wishing this screen was just a little brighter. If you plug another device in, this is instantly gonna swap over to its charger station mode. This is charging at 92.5 watts and it's putting out 20 to 30 watts for the ROG Ally. If we look at the ROG Ally, this can go all the way to its 30 watt turbo. The charge will fluctuate obviously, but this does support the full 30 watt turbo on the ROG Ally. My ROG Ally had a pretty full battery, so let's test one that needs a little bit of a charge. I got about 82% on my Steam Deck OLED, so let's plug this in and see how quick it charges. So I got that plugged in using their cables. It does look like it's boosting up to 45 watts. This can also be used to safely charge much smaller items like a simple controller, with the charge going as low as a couple watts. This is something that I think is very safe to use on a lot of older devices. I know a lot of devices like the 35XX and the Mio Mini require very simple chargers, so this should do the trick. I'm going to go ahead and charge this up to 100% just to see how long it takes. Then let's do a couple tests on a couple different handhelds to see what kind of charge we can get with this power bank. Using a 65 watt charger, we can go from 0 to 100 in only 2 hours and 5 minutes. I have the 100 watt AYN charger and that was able to charge it fully in 1 hour and 28 minutes. Considering this is a 144 watt hour battery, this is pretty quick charging. I wanted to test a few different handhelds in a few different tiers, and I also wanted to see how long it took to charge the device and how many times you could actually charge the device with the battery bank if it was full. The Retroid Pocket 4 Pro was able to charge fully in 2 hours and 16 minutes. This means you could almost get 4 full charges with the battery bank on the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro. The AYN Odin 2 was able to fully charge in just under 2 hours. If you were to use this battery bank on the Odin 2, you could charge the device just over 3 times fully with it. 
Moving things up to an x86 device, we get some faster charging. The ROG Ally was able to fully charge in an hour and a half, and you could almost get three full charges with it. This is pretty good considering the ROG Ally is pretty power hungry. These are not bad results at all, and I'm pretty impressed with the battery bank so far. I've made a few mistakes when reviewing power banks before, so I wanted to make sure I was really thorough in this test. The next thing I did was plug in a device to the charger with a really good cable. This is their cable that I'm using and I know it's rated for at least 140 watts. So this cable should be a good one to test with. I plugged it into the power bank with the little tester tool just to make sure that it was actually showing the correct wattages. If we look really closely at the tester tool, it shows that the Retroid Pocket 4 Pro is currently charging at 7 watts. Both the charger tool and the actual battery bank are showing 7.2 to 7.3 watts. So this is very accurate. If you're looking to get something that shows you the current charge speed, this is definitely something that I would trust with the readouts. Unfortunately, this display has been a little bit problematic over the past couple of days. I have a right angle adapter coming up the back of my desk from my 100 watt charger. This shows the first problem. This isn't really an issue, but it's just something that I've noted. The display is currently flipped this way. If I wanted this display to be shown landscape so I can see what it's doing, I can't really flip that. Whereas the tester tool is accurately showing the wattages and displaying in the correct format so I can read it easy, the battery bank orientation on the readout isn't really changed. Most people are probably going to plug this in from behind their desk. That makes the display even harder to read. Because of course when it's plugged in the back, all the charging ports are in the front which makes them easy to use. If you want to see what those are charging at, it's completely upside down. I kind of wish this could be flipped around because if this was flipped around, you could read it accurately while you're sitting at your desk. I do like using this as a charging hub though, and I think it's a really good battery bank regardless. Next up, I wanted to take a look at the portability of this. This is my ROG Ally travel bag, and I take this with me every day to work. My ROG Ally or any handheld I bring with me goes in the back, and those fit really nice. If you haven't checked out my review on this bag, make sure to check it out. I do really like their charger still, and not just because they sent it over obviously. It fits really nice into this little pocket, and if you angle it down, it's completely covered. I generally fit my battery bank in the front pocket here, but I wanted to see if we could fit the Starship battery bank in this bag. If we put it down, it definitely fits. As the battery bank is a little heavy, it kind of falls forward, but it does sit down there really nice, and I could easily take this with me. They did also send over this nice canvas bag, and this fits the battery bank really nice. If I was taking this with me out in my travel bag, I'd definitely put this in here to protect the screen against scratching. There's lots of room in there, and it seals off nicely. I do prefer this canvas bag over the one that they get with the INIU ones. The INIU one has a nice texture, but I do prefer the canvas bag. Both of these are really nice though. So if you are looking for a really good battery bank and you don't mind the extra weight, I definitely recommend checking out the Starship battery bank from Aohi. I love the design and everything that they've done with it, and I think it's really cool. The on-screen display is really neat and it does work very accurately. The only issue with this is it doesn't rotate and unfortunately it's not that bright. Under studio lights, it's a little different. If I shut these studio lights off, it's a lot easier to see. With the studio lights off and the room light still on, it's quite easy to see. I do also like that I can turn this into a charging station. As soon as you plug the cable in and then plug something in to charge it, the battery bank will automatically swap into a charger station. What do you guys think of this Starship battery bank from Aohi? Make sure to let me know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any future videos and as always, thanks for watching.